Hi, this is Roisin in Finland, and today I'm going to show you how to color grade Sony ZV-1 footage using an ACES workflow in DaVinci Resolve. For the impatient ones, the first thing you need to keep in mind is that you will need to shoot in S-Log3 and then either s 3 or s 3 Cine, which means that with the default picture profiles that's either PP8 or PP9. Then, when you create the footage in DaVinci Resolve, the first node needs to be an ACE transform going from S Log3 and either S Gamma 3 or S Gamma 3 Cine, depending on what did you shoot with your ZV1, going into ACE CCT. Then, the final node will be another ACE transform going from ACE CCT to Rec 709, and then you'll do all the grading in the middle. If you have set up a proper white balance with the camera. The only thing you'll need to do really is to adjust a little bit the exposure because hopefully you did overexpose a bit the footage as you should with lock footage as we explained in this other video. And then maybe increase a little bit the saturation at this. With that you will have and you should have a color accurate properly exposed image. And then if you still want to do some creative grading you can do that. But before we hop into DaVinci Resolve and I show you how this works, a couple of comments. The first one is that for all of you keyboard warriors typing that any bit footage in s -Log is a bad idea and it will never work and it's useless, hold your horses, it's okay. 10 bits would be better than 8 and 12 would be better than 10, but 8 bits and s -Log are not unusable and they are not useless and they are so at least give a try to this workflow, and if it still doesn't work for you, then do not use it, but don't discourage other people. Then if instead of ACES you're interested in using color space transforms and working, working for instance in Arial X, Arial Log C color spaces, then please check this other video that I have on the CV1 and using that method. And then a question of what is ACES. So ACES stands for the Academy Color Encoding System. And the idea is that this is a proper mathematical way of interpreting the log footage of your camera into a delivery color space, which in our case and most of you guys with the ZV-1 will be Rec 709. The idea behind the ACES workflow is that you can have several different cameras with their own color science and when you bring them into, into the ACES workflow, DaVinci Resolve will behave exactly in the same way because you're working in the same color space and that's a color space that then is designed to be then transformed into delivery color spaces. As I said before, Rec 709 for us, but there are other options as well that you might want to explore. The Sony ZV-1 as a cinema camera is definitely not listed there, but the particular S-Log3 and s 3 profile is, and we have that in the ZV-1, so why not give it a try? And if all of this sounded fancy and complicated and having the word academy, you think that this should be used only by Hollywood people, don't be scared, it's not that difficult, it works and you'll get good results with your CV1. So let's get into DaVinci Resolve and let's take a look on how to do that in practice. So now we're in DaVinci Resolve version 17.4.2 and I'm showing the studio version, but everything that I'll be doing, it, you can do exactly the same in the free version. Then when it comes to color management, I have it set to DaVinci YRGB color managed. And what I'll be showing now is how to go very quickly, and we're gonna even put a clock somewhere here, on how to go from this image with this S Log3 and S Gamma 3 from the Sony ZV-1 into a good looking image with good skin tones with very little effort and very little time. So let's start the clock and let's get to it. On the first note, we're having an ACES transform going from S Log3 and S Gamma 3 to ACES CCD. Then I'm gonna have two more notes, one for exposure, one for saturation, and one final note with another AC transform, and in this case going out from AC CCT into Rec 709. Then I'm just gonna adjust the exposure to get my skin tones where I want them, which is somewhere around here. So let's do this, and somewhere around there. That's how I like the exposure, and let's take a look at full screen. I'm actually I'm pretty happy even with the contrast, so that's good. And then I'm just gonna bump up the saturation a little bit and the color boost a little bit to get a little bit more color. But let me show you. This is without the saturation and color boost and this is with. And we are 
done. Did you see how quickly we did actually color grade S log3 from the Sony ZB1 8-bit footage to get a good looking image? And I was talking about the skin tone, so let's take a look actually. So I'm gonna put here the vector scope. Let me show it in a bigger size. And what we're gonna do here is basically have a window on my face to show you the skin tones. So there we go. And the skin tones are where they are supposed to be. We didn't do anything else than the two ACS transforms, adjusting the exposure to go down from an overexposed image as you should with SLUX3, and a bit of saturation and a bit of color boost, and that's it. Now, we're done with this. Let me take a look at that. Let me take that away. And here I actually have two clips. So this is the me talking head clip. And then this one, which is the X-ray color checker. So we're gonna check the color accuracy of the method. And let's see if we need to make some small adjustments to make it even more color accurate. In this image, there's not that much color other than my face being skin tones. Everything else is on the gray and black side. Um, by the way, this was properly white balanced using auto white balance in the ZB1, which is always nice. But now let's do this. I'm gonna actually copy the grade from one clip prior. And we can see with exactly the same grade than a moment ago, of course, this is the same room with the same light in exactly the same situation. The colors are pretty accurate. The red, magenta, blue, yellow are what they are supposed to be. The green and the cyan could use a little bit more effort. So that's what we'll do now. And because we could still adjust a little bit where the green and the cyan lay to have more color accurate image, I'm gonna create another node and I'm gonna use the color warper. Let me actually put it in bigger size so you can see what I'm doing. And we're gonna add some more points in here. But basically what I want is that this green, instead of going there, goes here. So let's see if by shifting the green hue, we can get there, we can't. So let's see by shifting this a bit more towards the green. And there we are. Now the green is where it's supposed to be. And a little bit the same with the cyan. So let's take that a bit more towards the cyan. And now all of these primary colors are where they are supposed to be. Let me close this one. And I'm gonna show it full screen before and after. So this is after the color warper and this is before. You can see the biggest difference being the green and the cyan. Let's show it again. Now they are more similar to how does this look in real life. So again, we had a very quick and easy way of getting my talking head video to a proper good looking, good skin tones. And it wanted to be a bit more precise. This didn't take that much extra. And now what I would do is actually save this as a power grade. So basically I can go to my gallery, I'm in one of my power grid folders, and I can save this as a power grid. Which means that this can be applied not just within this project, but into any project. And if I know that this is the ZV1, SLOG3, SGAM3 with ACES, and this is what I can apply anywhere. And when I apply this power grid to any clip shot with, again, PP9 in the Sony ZV1, I will adjust the exposure however I have to and you saw before that I only touch the offset and nothing else this is how I like to do it just a bit of saturation and a bit of color boost and this color warper it basically does balance a little bit the color accuracy based on this picture and then after this if you want to do some creative things and till an orange or whatever you want to do you can do that of course but here you have a good color correction that it was very very easy to do with a Sony CV1, 8-bit footage, and S-Log3, and using something as fancy sounding as an ACES workflow. So now we can go back and wrap this up. All right, so now you saw in the Vinci result how easy it was to get accurate colors using S-Log3 and the Sony ZV-1 with the ACES workflow. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and we're gonna see you soon for some more content. <laughs>